Conjoined twins, they're an incredibly rare phenomenon with an extremely poor prognosis. So how does a surgeon actually go about separating them? Hey guys, Tara here for D News, and if you haven't heard the news, there was a pair of conjoined twins born in Texas back in April who in a few months will be undergoing separation surgery. It's an incredibly risky procedure that's only performed when doctors are convinced that their present quality of life is so low the surgery is basically necessary. It's also incredibly rare. Only about one in every 100,000 live births is conjoined twins, and 60% of them don't make it past the first few days of life. Essentially, it's an abnormality that occurs in the process of identical twinning, and it's believed to happen very early on, between 13 to 15 days after fertilization. In normal cases of identical twins, the embryo splits off into two, but for conjoined twins, that splitting process halts and the place where the embryo remains fused eventually becomes the part of the twins that are connected. This particular pair of twins in Texas happens to be joined at the chest, and they share a liver, a diaphragm, intestines, and a pericardial sac, which is the tissue that lines your heart. Technically, this kind of pair is referred to as omphalopagus twins, and they comprise about 30% of all conjoined twin cases. According to doctors, it's actually one of the most ideal scenarios for separation surgery, which brings up an interesting question. How do you actually separate twins who share vital organs? Well, it turns out that in most cases, you really can't. The most common type of conjoined twins are called thoracopagus twins, meaning they share a heart. And that's the most difficult operation because it involves sacrificing one twin's life in order to save the other. Craniopagus twins, which are twins who share a skull but not a brain also present a unique problem. Surprisingly, the hardest part there isn't separating the skull, it's dividing the blood vessels in such a way that one or both of the twins doesn't bleed out during surgery. Because skull bone has three separate layers, a spongy middle one surrounded by tough inner and outer layers, doctors can actually chisel through that middle layer and separate the inner and outer ones, effectively creating two different skulls. It's risky, but there have been successful cases of separation where both twins actually survived. As for the twins born in Texas, they're actually quite lucky because most of the organs they share can be divided relatively easily. The liver in particular is one of the few organs that can regenerate itself. So you can essentially cut it in half, and then once the twins are separated, it'll regrow normally in each of them. Before the procedure begins though, doctors have to implant tissue expanders underneath the skin near the area where they'll be separated. And they'll slowly expand over the course of several months so that when the girls are eventually separated, doctors will be able to use that extra skin to stitch up the open chest cavity. Once the surgery begins, the girls will have a team of 20 to 30 doctors working on them, separated into two separate teams. The team responsible for the actual separation, and then another team that works on each individual twin post-separation. During the surgery, doctors will divide all of the organs up, including the liver, as well as the diaphragm and the intestines. Intestines, of course, cannot regrow themselves, but you can cut them in half and reconstruct them so that each twin has a functioning organ. Organ. They'll just be half as short as normal. Like most kinds of conjoined twins, the hardest part isn't necessarily separating the organs, it's separating the blood vessels and knowing where to attach each one. That's why surgeries like this usually require dozens of doctors, each with different specialties. It is truly a life or death version of the game operation, and I can't even begin to imagine how difficult it is, so we wish these girls all the best. And in the meantime, if you guys have any questions, comments, anything you want to say about this episode, let us know in the comments below. Otherwise, thanks for watching. Thank you.